Hey guys, Peter no King. Guys, today we're going to check out some fanfiction written by you guys about me because why the hell not? And of course you did. And then after that, we're going to check out some fanfiction about Terry because most of you guys are from the Tosami. And I thought it would be interesting to see the difference in fanfiction writing style between the Baby Noics and the Tosami. Now, you know, I'm thinking that the Baby Noic one is going to be more kinky. Okay, because I raised my baby noix right. But yeah, guys, and some of you said that you were writing hashtag Perry fanfictions. So I look forward to reading them in the near future. But uh, yeah, let's get right into it, guys. So as you can see here, boom, three Google tabs open. But this is not a Pedro on Amigo video. Speaking of which, I have to do like three Pedro on Amigo videos. And if we've reached 7k... By the time I upload this video, that means I would have to upload four Pedro on Amigo videos. So I'll have to like make like a really good Pedro on Amigo episode to make up for all of them. Because remember, every milestone, so every K that we reach, I'm supposed to upload a new Pedro on Amigo video. But since we're going so fast, then, you know, I haven't had time to pump it out. Um, once again, thank you so much to Terry and the Tosami. I know I keep saying it, but I'm going to keep saying it, okay? That's how grateful I am. So, yeah, guys, three Google tabs open here. I'm gonna go... I think you guys wrote it on Wattpad, so I'm gonna go Peter Nowick. Peter Nowick age. Y'all wanna know my age, alright. Alright, settle down. We're gonna open that. We're gonna open this. We're gonna open this. Uh, we're gonna open this. Oh, that's school love. Okay, chemistry. Oh. And we're gonna open this. And just for fun, we're gonna open the Amino app. Because I know you guys made an Amino group for me back then, so... Alright, let's see. Hey, new baby Noik here. I found Peter's channel because of the first Omegle video he made, and I instantly fell for him. Oh, fuck. Feel free to message me whenever you feel like it. Good shit, good shit, guys. Can I check out the actual... Oh, this is it. New Amino. Okay, alright. Papa Peter, Oh, Guys! No, you guys... Oh, no, you found my cringy video from back then where I recited the periodic table. Oh, no. Oh, dear. We're going to start with Strange Date. Okay, let's go. 73. You go and blindfold Peter for a date. What will happen? Oh, dear. All right, here we go. Here we go, fam. Am I going to be just another girl on your hit list? No, love. You're different. Fine. But how do I know that? She twisted to face him. You could just be playing me and I'd fall for it. Read. Oh. Lie down. Yes or no, said. What? Is this... Oh, is this like the character... Like your name? I don't know. Okay. Well, come on then. Do you want to? Peter smiled. He lay back and folded his hands behind his head. Folded... Folded his hands behind his head. How do you... Folded his hand. Okay, like this, right? The blanket beneath them was wonderfully soft. And... And YN... Alright, I really need to understand what YN means here. YN is you, right? Like, like, like this is in, in your perspective, is that... YN fanfic meaning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, is a genre of fanfiction uh, in younger fandoms where the writer lets the reader insert themselves. Oh, okay. So I'm just going to replace YN with you. Okay, so when I'm reading it, okay. The blanket beneath them was wonderfully soft and you smelled of her bath soap, cinnamon and vanilla. Sweet and spicy. I didn't know you were into this kind of stuff. He laughed. To be honest, I'm curious. You gave him a playful punch and giggled. He pictured her nose crinkling up as she laughed. Oh, that sounds pretty cute. He couldn't see past the blindfold. She had tied over his eyes. Maybe a little too tightly. With the blindfold on, he let his imagination wander. What are they doing? She had led him outside. A beautiful hot summer night and a pleasant breeze. No mosquitoes. He remembered her chirping. What? Is, is this a bird? <laughs> An image came to mind. A bodice. A bo- What the hell's a bodice? What the- What the flip? Bodice? You guys are using hard definition here. The part of a woman's dress, which is above the waist. Ah, oh, okay. See, I'm, I'm learning fashion here. Okay, all right. Very nice, very nice. What's this one? Uh, where's the bodice? What was I up to? Here, okay. An image came to mind. A bodice, lacy and light blue, strapped tight around her waist. 
cupping her generous breasts and hooking to matching guard is on her muscled thighs. Oh, okay, got some muscled thighs there. All right, soft and let down, her hair would float down around her shoulders, and her brown eyes would stare up into his as she knelt. Okay, all right. Oh shit. Um. Okay, that's fine. That's fine, guys. We're we're gonna read this for an hour because this is in typical Terry TV fan fiction reading fashion, you know. So um. Hey, you can take it off now, she said. Her voice came from behind him. When he smirked, making no move to untie it, she pulled his head onto her lap as she did it herself. All right, lazy bones, open your eyes. Oh, shit. All right, here we go, here we go. At first, his eyes saw nothing but darkness. Judging by the distance they'd walked, they were far enough away from the lights of the city. They stood in a clearing, shrouded in darkness, but one by one, pinpricks of light filled in his vision. Lowering her voice, you sung an old nursery rhyme. Big, little, dim and bright stars illuminate the night. Then you leaned into his sight, her face upside down to his. Beautiful, right? You are, I agree. Shut up. She pushed his face to the side. Oh, this is cute. Man. What the hell is this? She let his head back down on the blanket and then crawled over and curled up beside him. She nuzzled her nose into his chin. Nuzzled her nose. Okay, that's pretty cute. And kissed his neck. Oh, shit. Peter wrapped his arms around her shoulders and kissed her forehead. Peter pulled away. So he could look into her face and smell. Oh no, this is so cute. What is this, man? Okay, alright. I really thought you brought me out here to... He wiggled his eyebrows. Oi, you're disgusting. Oh no. Guys, I'm not that kinky. Okay. Okay, maybe I am. I don't know. You jerked away, glanced at the blindfold, and her eyes widened. She blushed. Visible enough... Uh, not enough. Where'd I get enough from? Visible even in the darkness, but... Made it out like she was angry. You shrugged off her leather jacket and drew her fingers through each braid to losses her hair. Peter imagined sex goddess wore instead a loose grey jumper and practical beige dungarees. Alright, I clearly don't know girls' clothing. Bungaree. Dungaree. Where'd I get bungaree from? Dungaree. Okay, dungaree. Dungaree. Holy shit. A garment consisting of trousers with a bib held up by straps over the shoulders. Oh, you mean like overalls? Is that? Yeah, yeah, overalls. Okay. Alright, uh, you guys call them dungarees? Or maybe that's the actual name for it. Okay. Wait, what are overalls? In? Wait, hold on. I'm... Yeah, overalls. Yeah, look, same thing. See, I know my fashion, guys, okay? Um, she sat back. Wait, what color is beige? Oh, my God. Look, I... <laughs> okay, all right. That's a, that's a nice color. Um, she sat back on her wrists, legs outstretched before her, and cast her gaze towards the stars. Okay, whew. Okay, so so we're just we're we're outside and we're looking up. Okay, that's very nice, very nice. Uh, Peter sighed. <laughs> for a while, the two of them stayed there in peaceful silence and grateful for each other's presence. Do you, do you think we have something? You asked. It feels real. I just want it to be real. I'm just. Oh my god, uh, uh, this is this is getting too real right now, fam. Peter rubbed his palms on his trousers, aware that they had suddenly gotten sweaty. Knees weak, arms are heavy. He's choking on his mama's spaghetti. Alright. Was it hot out here? A little, yeah. But he was boiling. You looked down. Peter looked at his hands. His hands had held her. Had helped her. Had explored her too. Oh dear. What, what is it? Look. I love the way you guys describe stuff. It's, it's really... It's on point, man. Gotta give it to you. Shout out to VIP Big Bang, okay? I just need to know what we are, she breathed. I know I love you. I don't know how you feel about me. Okay, this is getting way too real now. Oh, okay. I mean, alright. That's fine. 
He pulled them into fists and crossed his arm. How do you... What? That's so awkward, though. Like, it... it okay. <laughs> Close to himself, away from her. Why was he getting so whipped up? Isn't this what he had wanted? What was he going to say? I mean, it wasn't that they didn't have something. It was that Peter didn't want them to have something. It was there. Painfully obvious, too. Yet Peter pretended not to see it. He had the feeling you was looking at him now, expecting an answer. The blanket they shared shifted. Maybe if he shut his eyes tight enough, he'd be back in his bedroom. Or another woman's bedroom. Sneaking out before the sun came up. Wow, come on. Wow, wow. Hot. You think I'm that sort of... Per okay, alright. <laughs> we'll just go along with this. Um, inhale. Count to ten. Exhale. What? He finally said. He opened his eyes. Turned to see... You. She wasn't there. Oh, no! Her leather jacket lay discarded, crumpled carelessly. Peter got to his feet and picked it up. You, he shouted. You, wait! Having no idea where he was, as he'd been blindfolded the walk out. True. Peter tripped and stumbled over roots and brambles in the thick forest. Where was the city? He twisted around, looking for any light to indicate human life. All he saw were stars and the twinkle of fresh dew under moonlight. You had tried her best to hide her heart, but had failed miserably. Every emotion was broadcasted through her expression, speech, every action, love included, love especially. Peter stopped, heart racing, speeding alongside his thoughts. He realized he'd been sprinting through the forest, completely unaware of where we were going. Oh no, I think it's where he was going, I think, yeah. He braced himself against the tree to catch his breath. What do I want? Do I want love? Do I want to commit? Do I want my life as it is? Oh shit, okay fam. Whew. Holy bejeebus, okay. Peter slipped his hands into his hair, dragged them down to cover his eyes. Tears? Yeah, but what from? Confusion? Love? Or loss? He slumped down the tree and sat with his arms wrapped around his knees. Damn, what is this rhymes? Okay. And his head bowed. It was not okay to cry, not even alone. He had an image to purvey. Whoa, damn, purvey. I never heard this word in my life. Purvey. Damn, you guys are intellectuals here. Purvey. Provide. Okay, yeah, because you got to keep the image, you know, conceal, don't feel. I like it, guys. I like it. Mr. Unbreakable, Mr. Ironheart, Playboy extraordinaire, Peter, <laughs> gallant Peter, happy-go-lucky, that boy's a charmer, he is. It occurred to him, he had proven you right. It was the first night they'd spent together in Y's room, I mean in your room. He could tell she was nervous, not her first time though. Am I going to be just another girl on your hit list, she asked. Dead serious, arms folded as if to protect herself. Peter had wrapped her in a hug. I think that's meant to be in. In a hug from behind. Resting his chin on top of her head. Oh, shit. That's... It's pretty cute. No, love. You're different, he cooed. Fine. But how do I know that? She twisted to face him. Wait. Haven't I read this? You could just be playing me and I'd fall for it. I've already fallen for it. Oh, no. Uh, no. She pressed into her tiptoes and kissed him. Prove me wrong. Alright. Alright. I see you. The kiss. Holy shit. He'd kissed her back and held her and given himself to her. Not all of it, but his night, body, his warmth, hers any time she asked. But Peter had never promised his love. Not once. Not when she whispered she loved him and did he love her too. Or oh, when she cried out his name and he hers, he never told her he loved her when they woke up together. He had simply folded himself into a shape to fit her, but he still hadn't been honest. Oh, shit. Honesty was all she'd ever asked for. Why is this making me emotional? Fuck me, man. He stood up, determined. He set his sights on the brightest source of light and set off towards it. It took him a couple minutes of clawing through branches and sidestepping rocks before he came across a beaten path. Eventually, it tied itself to another route, worn even further. The streets were busy, and people bustled along. 
Most just getting in Peter's way. He ran through, pushing people and earning a couple rude remarks on his way. You, he screamed, you. He paused in the street, noticing the attention he'd attracted from the crowd. Children, the few who were still out this late, peeked out from behind their parents, and civilians whispered and gestured. God, my nose is getting blocked. You was pretty well known around the city. She was friendly and kind. So long as her conversation showed her respect too. If not, well, every rose has its thorns, and you bared hers like a threat. She had acquaintances all over the city, friends from bars and fights and people she'd bumped into and liked. Has anyone seen her? He shouted. Anyone, I need to apologize. Peter felt a hand on his shoulder. It squeezed, pulling him backwards and causing him to lose balance. Before he could steady himself, the hand scooped him back to his feet and swiftly shoved him down again, a slender yet calloused hand. You, right here, fuckboy. Oh, it was the girl. She hit him quickly with hard and sharp knuckles across the jaw with the precision of an athlete. She snatched his collar and reared back her arms as if to hit him. Oh, like, oh, Peter didn't doubt she would. Oh, shit. So I'm bracing for it. And the minute he opened his mouth and smoked, Smoke? What? Look, I read smacked and I read spoke, okay? I'm, my mind is going too fast here. And spoke, she smacked him. I love you. I never said it because... Wait, what? She dropped his collar and he fell. Damn, you guys are strong. <laughs> Could you stop with that, Peter moaned? Please, calm down. You compiled. You complied. Oh my god, what is wrong with me? Look, it's the emotion that's getting to me, guys, okay? First, by helping him back up. She pulled her hands to her chest, seeming even a little shocked herself as to how far she'd gone with her revenge. I love you, Peter repeated. I love you so, so much, more than I wanted to. He looked her dead in the eye, eyes wide open. Oh, God, why is this making me emotional? What? I'm not a pussy, okay? What? Who do you think I am? <sighs> <clears throat> okay, eyes wide open, heart wide open, and completely vulnerable. I never wanted to believe it. I still don't want it to be true because I don't want to lose you as well. I love you. Your face tried to decide between a smile and a glare. It chose neither, and instead she leapt forward and kissed him hard. Applause came roaring up from the crowd. Ah, oh, yeah, true. We forgot about the crowd that had gathered around them, interested in the fight. When he reached up to hold her face, she pressed her hand against his. Well, what is this romantic shit, man? God damn it. Uh, he stopped to breathe, and she collapsed into him, breathing sweetly. He hugged her tight, like protection. Promise me you won't leave me lost again, she whispered. Peter smiled, caressing her head and gently untangling her hair. Oh, He planted a kiss on her forehead, and she started to cry. I promise. Okay, you know, I'm holding strong here, you know, like, uh, I expected it to be kinky, but you guys are hopeless romantics like your papa, holy shit, I've raised you guys right, like, I'm quite proud, I'm quite, to be continued in Strange Date, oh, so I read it in order, yes, alright, Strange Date, where the hell's Strange Date though, Strange Date, she never completed it, Oh no! Please continue it! VIP Big Bang! Look, guys, go to this one and, and spam her so so she continues it, because this one was so good. Oh. Oh, bless. This is from months ago. Holy shit. Oh, what? People commented. Cannot wait for this to continue. It's really good. Please do. Look, someone. Peter Nork's baby. Holy bejeebus. Let's go. Let's go, fam. Okay. VIP, Big Bang, guys, like, slow clap. Holy bejeebus, please continue it. It was so good, man. Oh, man, this... Come on, look, even Peter Nook's baby here knows what's up. I will link all these fan fictions in the description so you guys can read it yourself. Um, and you can leave comments on it. Oh, VIP, Big Bang, it's... Oh, what, this person wrote so many... Alright, uh, this will be one shot of Peter X Reader. Okay, so one shots is like... Okay, I clearly I don't know what one shots means. One shots meaning... Warpad, yeah. 
What does that mean? 18 plus? No, no, I, I, one shot meaning. Um, a term used in fan fiction to say there will only be one body of text, one chapter. Oh, okay. All right. Different chapters. I like it. I like it. All right, let's go read. Bam. Tangled. I'm so bored, Peter groaned as he fell over to lay on his back. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't think of it before, you yelled. What? asked Bob. The kids used to play a game back home called the Human Knot. Okay, everyone, first, you have to get in a circle. Once they were in place, you continue. Okay, reach your right hand out into the circle. I know which one's my right hand, okay, guys? Uh, and grab someone's right hand. Once you and Peter were holding hands, both had blushing faces. Aww. Anyway, then take your left hand and grab someone else's left hand. Now we have to untangle ourselves without letting go. After 30 minutes of screaming at each other, they were untangled. Okay, let's play a more quiet game. Everyone find a partner. I call you, yelled Pedro and Peter. Nope, I said it first, said Peter. <laughs> There's Pedro and Peter, I love it. Okay. Nope. I said at first, said Peter, who was still holding your hand. Pedro and Peter ended up being partners. Oh, oh my god, is this is kinky shit. Okay. Okay, this game is called 20 Questions. One person will ask the other a question, but they will both have to answer, and then the other person will ask a question, and so on, until you reach 20. Okay, Peter, you go first. Okay, um, what is your favorite color? Gold, you answered a little too quickly. Mine is ocean blue. Okay, well, it's my turn. Well, I thought I was with Pedro. Okay, I'm confused now. Are you Pedro? So why did your heart beat pick up when you grabbed my hand? Oh shit, alright, here we go. Peter blushed at this. Well, um, because I, I love you, Peter said looking down. I love you too, you said quietly. Peter's head snapped up instantly. You do? Peter asked, surprised. Peter yelled next to a heartbroken Pedro. Suddenly, Peter was kissing her. She kissed back. All their passion and love for each other was bored into their kiss. Guys, uh, press F right now on your keyboard for Pedro here. He got heartbroken. I'm sorry, Pedro. Look, like, better luck next time, mate. Poor Pedro XD, true. All right, next part. Let's go. Let's go, fam. Well, time flies. Holy shit, it was half an hour already. I really need to pick up the pace if I want to read all this. Okay, Pedro and Bob were both in the living room, playing some Sega Genesis as Pedrina entered the living room. What are you two doing here? Pedrina asked as she held her hands together, tilting her head to the right as she blinked innocently. Pedro stuck his tongue out as he tried looking past Pedrina. Move, Rina. Me and Bob are playing Sonic. Pedrina blinked, turning around to see split-screen Sonic as she clapped her hands together. Oh, are you? Can I join you two? Well, Bob droned on as he glanced down, rapidly pressing buttons. Me and Pedro are kind of having our own little thing, little time. Where'd I get thing from? Oh my god. Pedrina then sat down in between Pedro and Bob, giggling as she moved her arms about. Great. Then I shall watch you to play the Sonics. Pedro rubbed the back of his head, with his right hand. Okay, I know the difference. Look, Pedrina, no offense, but me and Bob have a night to ourselves, you know. Oh, but I do know, Pedrina interrupted as she held Pedro's hands. In fact, I can hear you two having fun. Without warning, Pedrina farted loudly, <laughs> sigh of relief, as Pedro and Bob dropped their jaws in disbelief, with Pedrina giggling as she frantically waved the air with her right hand. Oh my goodness, that sounded like a tuba. Pedrina giggled as she pooted again, noticing how warm she was feeling. My rear is really churning them out. I'll say, Bob stated in disbelief as he shook his head. Pedro placed his hands on his face. Rina, you're far too louder than ours. How is that possible? Pedrina stuck her tongue out and she raised her left arm, letting out another deep-pitched toot as she winked. I'll show you. She giggled as she... Oh, okay, I thought she was going to pull down her pants. Holy shit. As one more loud fart followed. Oh, that's pretty cute. Okay. All right, all right. Dancing. Oh, okay. A frustrated Pedrina stormed through the door of her bedroom and threw down her backpack and a dance bag. Pedrina had always had a passion for dance. She had taken lessons in everything and now she was undertaking a new challenge. 
Ballroom dance. She started taking lessons after 8th grade and now halfway through freshman year. She was really good and getting ready for her first competition. Even though she had taken dance ever since she was 3, she never told her best friends Pedro, you and Bob. She had a competition coming up and she was struggling with some of the moves. She took off her jacket and stood in her dance practice outfit. Short black dance shorts and a tank top that cut low and was skin tight. If only Bob could see me like this. Oh, Madrina and Bob, alright, I shipped this. Then she realized she said that out loud. Of course, she had romantic feelings for her best friend, but he was clueless to pick up on them. She popped in a dance song, Wedding Dress by Taeyang, and put it on repeat. Then she started dancing. She kept messing up at the Pedrina part, the part where she was supposed to bend back. Your hair should brush my knee. She could hear her instructor saying over and over. Even in practice, she kept messing up. She couldn't go far enough or she fell over from going too far. Despite being a competitive gymnast and having practiced twice a week, she couldn't get that part of the dance. She needed someone to practice with, but she doubted it would make a difference. She was about to call it quits when the temperature in her room dropped 10 degrees and Pedrina shivered slightly. She looked over and realized her window was open. She just figured it was the wind that was cooling her room. As the song started again, she started dancing and she realized the wind was dancing with her. Not just with her, it was leading her. She willingly followed and for the first time that night got the part she kept messing up. As the song ended, Pedrina went over to turn the radio off and when she turned around, there stood her best friend Bob and Pedrina yelped in surprise. I knew that was coming, come on, you gotta ship it. Where did you learn to move like that? Bob asked. I've taken dance since I was three. This is my new thing, ballroom. Now, can I ask you, where did you learn to move like that? Pedrina asked. Bob looked down at his feet, embarrassed. I've taken dance and gymnastics since I was three. My mother made me at first, but then I developed a passion for it, and I love doing it. Oh, this is sweet. Pedrina noticed Bob was bright red, and he was still looking at his feet. Pedrina walked over to him and put her hands on either side of his face and forced him to look at her. Hey, it's nothing to be embarrassed about. I think it's great that a guy loves dance and gymnastics just as much as me. She pulled him in and gave him a hug and a quick peck on the cheek. Thanks, Bob said, but please don't tell Pedro or you. I'll never hear the end of it from them. I will on one condition. What's that? Go out with me. Be my boyfriend. Oh, I can know that. You don't tell him I dance. Pedrina said with a chuckle. Deal, Bob said. As he pulled her in for a hug and gave her a peck on the cheek. Nothing was said. They stared into each other's eyes. Dance with me, Bob asked. Pedrina nodded. Bob walked over to the radio and flipped through the CDs and popped one in and hit play. As he walked back to her, Taeyang's your mind filled the room. I've never heard your mind. Shall we listen to your mind? I don't want to get copyrighted, but I will listen to it after, guys, I promise. Bob grabbed Pedrina as they started dancing around the room. As the song faded out, Bob pulled her in and gave her a kiss on the lips. Oh, God. As he broke the kiss, he looked down at her lovingly. Pedrina, will you be my dance partner? Of course I will, Bob. He smiled and he pulled her in and they shared their first kiss. To be continued. My favorite two songs in the world, Taeyang will be missed. Guys, because I read this for 40 minutes, I still have to check out all the other ones, okay? So I I read Strange Day, and I read One Shot. They were both by VIP Big Bang. These other ones, wait, all of them are by B VIP Big Bang. Holy shit. All right, so guys, I'm going to move on to Terry TV fanfiction now because if I get through all of this, the video is going to be way too long. But guys, holy bejeebas. Like, guys, please, if you have a Wattpad account, please go to these first two stories that I read, especially this one, the Strange Day one, because that one was so good. And, oh, man, just, like, leave her a comment. Be like, it was so good. Please make more. Peter finally reacted to it. I hope she's still a baby Noic and knows that my channel got deleted because this was back in February and it got deleted in like March. So I hope she's still watching. 
Thank you so much for writing it. Terry is an ordinary guy living in Korea who is struggling to cope with depression. Oh shit, okay. That is until he meets you, a carefree and bright girl who gives him a new meaning to life. Oh, okay, this is, this is sweet. Oh. Uh, Alright, I guess we'll just, yeah, yeah, read that one, okay. Terry, point of view. They haunt me. The memories which carry along with them, the nostalgia, it's all too much for me. My eyes squint in the darkness, my soul already accustomed to the emptiness of it all. I stare outside my bedroom window that's providing the only source of light in my bedroom and that coming from a streetlight. Raindrops scatter from the visage. The sky is crying, I murmur, as I approach the window, easing it open. Cold raindrops land on my fingers as I lay my hand outside to remind myself that I exist. Oh damn, alright, this is getting pretty deep, alright. Like, so far, what I've noticed between both Baby Noix and Toast Army is that it's very descriptive, you know, you guys like to... But I guess that's the whole point of fan fiction, you gotta paint the universe here. Feeling helps me realize that, as I am now devoid of emotion, I can only feel the latter by external sensation. Oh no, he's been dead inside. I close my eyes relishing in my perception to feel. Something foreign forms on my face. My other hand reaches my face to touch my mouth. It was arched into a somber smile. Reality comes surging back as my smile fades away. The rain has stopped. Thoughts begin to cascade my mind as the memories begin to settle in. I walk towards my computer desk and turn the monitor on. The screen illuminates the room, filling it with white light. I log onto my YouTube account. I click on my recent upload and look at the stats. It had already garnered around 50k. I smiled, looking at the comments. It mostly consisted of sarcasm and jokes related to the video. I like some of them, and switched off the monitor. Darkness. YouTube helps me forget this world. When I'm recording, I feel like I'm in my own world. Oh, okay, this is starting to get pretty deep here. What? No, I didn't ask for this. I feel happiness, something unfamiliar to me. My fans, the Toast Army, help me forget about problems associated with this world. I can be who I want. Okay, no, this is getting too real. What? I didn't ask for this, okay? Fuck. And I don't have to worry about anything. Just for a few minutes, I forget. Alright. Alright, fam. Okay. I slowly walk to my bed, enter the cold covers. I try to close my eyes to block it all out, but I can't. I stare at the medication on my bedside table. Okay, damn. And reach out to take it. I shake out some brightly colored pills and swallow them without hesitation. After a couple of minutes, my eyelids begin to grow heavy and I drift to sleep. Oh, how I wish for it all to be a dream. Do I keep reading this one? Do I move on? I mean... Alright, fuck it. We're gonna keep going. I'm getting too into this. Alright. Your perspective. You? Have you packed all of your things? Mum called out. Yes, mom, I'll be out in a bit, I shouted, as I struggled to fit my things in my suitcase. I took one glance at my bedroom and hurried out with my small suitcase in my hand. Today, we were moving out of our Busan house and heading for Seoul. Mom's hospital placement got shifted to Seoul, as the hospital she worked in had closed off. Is that everything? She asked as she put in the remainder of the boxes in the moving van. Yeah, that's everything, I smiled as I pushed my suitcase into the moving van. Do you need any help, Mum? Ah, no, I'm fine. Y you. I think you should go and say goodbye to all your friends. We'll be on the road in an hour. She smiled as she reached for another box. I only had one friend who I'd actually miss when I leave. Since he lives next door to me, I knock on his door. His mother opens the door and smiles at me. Oh, hello, you. I was just going to your mother if she needed any help. Are you here to meet Jungkook? Jung cook, ah, oh, cookie, alright, alright, of course you have to add cookie. She smiles warmly at me. Yeah, Mrs. John, is he home? I smiled back. He actually left the house a couple minutes ago. He didn't tell me where he was headed. Oh no, okay, alright. Oh no, I see a love triangle. I see Jung cook being friend zoned here, and you guys picked Terry over Jung cook. Alright, alright. That, that's my that's my guess here. I had a feeling where he was at. Uh oh. Oh, it's fine, Mrs. John. Mum's near the moving van if you want to meet her. I smile fervently. I see. You must come to visit us from time to time. We'll miss you so much. Mrs. John smiled as she pulled me into a hug. I felt choked up as I smiled back. Of course we will. 
I had lived in this Busan house for as long as I can remember, and Mrs. John was a second mother to me. Oh, I started to walk towards where I thought John Cook was. We had a hangout place. No, okay, no, no, nope, nope. Near the public park. It was an old climbing frame, but it's been years since any kids approached it. We always went there to either hang out or just ease some stress. Jung Cook is upset that his friend is leaving to another town. God damn it. Okay. <sighs> As my feeling served correct, I could see a distant figure of Jung Cook leaning against the metal bars, wearing a black hoodie covering his face. Jung Cook, ah, I shout as I run to him. He looks up and unplugs an earphone from his ear. As he sees me approach, he smiles weakly. You, I punch him hard on the arm. Where were you? You knew I'd be leaving and you weren't even going to say goodbye. I yell as I look up at him with contempt. He looks away as he answers. You know I'm not good with goodbyes. <sighs> Fuck, no, no, what is this? I came here for some kinky fan fiction, okay? It always turns into a feel fest, okay? Don't give me that bullshit. You won't be seeing me for God knows how long. Is that how you pay back a childhood friend? I said as I tried to maintain eye contact. I'm sorry you, but there's something I need to tell you. No. Okay, holy shit. Oh, uh, no. No, I was correct. I was correct. Look, guys. Guys. I'm too good at fan fictions, okay? Like, I know this shit. I know how you guys think because I'm a hopeless romantic as well, okay? Like, I... I know what's up. Deep down, I'm like a teenage Tumblr girl, okay? That's my spirit animal. Whew. Alright. No, this is... No, no. Uh, my heart. My heart too. Stop it. Okay. I don't even think we'll get to the stalker, to be honest. Can we just stick with this one? This one's juicy. Okay. There's something I need to tell you. John Cook murmurs. He pushes me against the wall of a park building. He looks down and says, I love you, you. And it pains me to see you go like this. Oh, look, I'm not crying, okay? My nose is blocked because I'm sick, okay? Like, don't... You're the only person that knows me. No. Why? What? What is wrong with me? Am I really... Wow, I need to... I need a hug. That's what I need. Anyways, we'll hug afterwards, guys. Um, you're the only person that knows me for who I am and has been there for me this whole time. I'm going to miss you so much. Jungkook strokes my cheek and pulls my face to make me look at him. I look at him, his eyes drowning in lust. It's not lust! It's not lust! Come on, man! It's love! What do you mean? What do you mean, okay? As much as I ship you with Terry here, but like, ugh, you can't friends on Jungkook. No. No. Oh my god, this is only the second chapter and I'm already getting so into this. My eyes reflected confusion and fear. No. No, no. He begins to near me and closes the distance between us as he locks lips with me. Me, still confused and unaware of what to do, stay limp as his lips surround mine and engulf my presence. He senses my confusion and pulls back to look at me. Tears begin to form in my eyes. <laughs> no, no. As I begin to back away from him, Jungkook realizes his mistake and tries to approach me cautiously. You, I'm so sorry. I, I, sh I shouldn't have done that, I, but I, I couldn't control myself. Jungkook rushed as he tried to explain himself. No. Just stay away from me. No, no, fuck. No. I can't. I'm gonna... I'm gonna go cry in a corner after this, okay? I sobbed as I began to run away from him. It began to rain. Coincidentally. Very poetic. I like it. My clothes got soaked as I finally reached the moving van. My mum was waiting for me outside. You, are you done? It's time to leave, my mom shouted as I approached her. My tears were undetectable as the rain cascaded my face. Very nice. I'm all done, I murmur, as I enter the moving van. I took one last glance at the park 
and see Jungkook not too far away from us. He looks downcast as he looks at the floor. I feel my phone vibrate in my back pocket and I take it out and see it's a text from Jungkook. I'm sorry things had to end this way. Since 4.48pm. No. No. <laughs> I'm not crying, okay? I'm not, but this is... Guys, like... <sighs> okay. Alright. No, that's fine. You know what? We'll... Well, we have to end the video there, guys. I'm sorry. That's all the time. I really want to continue, but my stomach is growling, guys, and I really have to eat, but guys, we have to continue this. So guys, the links to all the fan fictions we read in this video will be in the description, guys. Love. Am I right, guys? Am I right? Feels bad for... Co oh, no. You're playing with my heart here. My heart, too. Oh. Guys, thank you so much for sitting through this video with me. I really appreciate it. Like, man, bring it in for a hug, guys. We need a hug. Here's the hug, okay? Well, there, I kiss you guys, okay? Because I love you, okay? Don't reject me like you reject Cookie here. But guys, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button. It helps out a lot. I had so much fun making this video. And guys, hit the subscribe button if you're new here. Turn on those notifications for more quality content. And guys, tell me in the comments below what your favorite fan fiction from this episode was. And yeah, which one you want me to read more of. Be sure to write your hashtag Perry fan fictions. Because I will check them out, guys, in a future episode. And share this video with everyone you know. Share them the feels because this was a feels train. Bogoshipta, and guys, I will see you all tomorrow. Stay awesome, guys.